Hi, my name is Elaine Petro. I'm a member of the Space Power and Propulsion Lab at the University of Maryland. Uh, so her research is actually on uh, a type of technology called the helicon thruster, uh, in particular the superconducting helicon thruster. Her focus is really looking at uh, operating the thruster using water as a propellant and some of the challenges associated with that. Uh, using water as a propellant has some, pot uh, some potential advantages uh, because water is the one thing that we really think is prevalent in the solar system and might be reasonably easy to access. Uh, so a lot of the other uh, typical propellants that you would use are not something that you could necessarily find sort of lying around somewhere. So a helicon thruster is a type of ion propulsion system and ion propulsion systems are ideal for deep space travel because we can accelerate the propellant to much higher velocities than we can with the typical chemical propellant system. Here we have a schematic of the first stage of the engine where the neutral gas is ionized to form a plasma. For a single stage helicon thruster, the plasma is simply allowed to expand out the back of the chamber where it gets accelerated across the plasma sheath at the exit and it forms a high energy exhaust beam that is used to propel the spacecraft. In order to further improve the performance, we're looking at adding a second stage, which allows us to add even more energy into the propellant and achieve higher exhaust velocities and better efficiency. We're interested in using ion cyclotron heating to resonantly heat the ions. In the two-stage system, the energy deposited in the second stage is converted into directed kinetic energy in the exhaust beam. We believe with this type of system that we can finely tune the thrust in the specific impulse, which will allow us to improve upon the state of the art in helicon thruster performance and develop a system that is competitive with existing ion engine or hull thruster technology, but provides the benefits of electrodeless operation and a wider range of propellants like water vapor. I think a, a water Water vapor propelled helicon thruster could have a huge impact for the types of missions that NASA is interested in. When we're going outside of Earth and we're looking for life in other places in the solar system, NASA's plan is to follow the water in the solar system. So we're going to places that have liquid water. And those are places we'd want to bring samples back from. But typically it's our propellant and our propulsion system that limits us from getting these places and from coming back. I'm lucky enough to be funded by the National Science Foundation and their Graduate Research Fellowship and also the Zonta Foundation through the Amelia Earhart Fellowship. And both of those organizations uh, give us the ability to conduct, our, conduct and direct our own research. So we get to work on the things that we think are most important. And I think that uh, this project in particular is really important for advancing our capabilities in deep space exploration and to answer one of the questions that has been around since um, the beginning of civilization is, is there other life in the universe? And I think this is a key technology that could really help uh, NASA or our space program address those goals.